Hello again, everybody. Zach Attack is here with my WWE wall review for tonight, Monday, October 1st, 2012. Now, wall tonight, um, another big bag. What do you expect from a uh, three hour wall? We had some good things, really bad things, and, uh, like I said, mixed bag of good and bad. That's what you get when you get a three hour wall. Which started off this evening with CM Punk coming out with Paul Heyman. Of course, CM Punk, once again, blah, blah, was back, blah, blah, blah. And once again, vowing to everybody that he won't be facing off against John Cena at Hell in a Cell. Of course, we still don't know at this point who we wrestling Punk at Hell in a Cell. We can kind of guess one man who did get involved with CM Punk later on in the evening. But I see a punk straight away from answering questions about a certain person that reminds people of Goldberg, of course, who stood up for Mick Foley after he got attacked by Mr. Punk last week. They went back to the whole AJ thing. Now, I know there's this big storyline going on with AJ maybe getting fired, same with Booker T, who was also on Raw tonight, to be fired. Both of them would be fired, replaced by one major. GM for both shows like a John Laurinaitis type, but not Mr. Laurinaitis per se. And that brought out Vicky Guerrero and Dolph Ziggler. Of course, Heyman and Vicky both want to be the new GM, replace AJ. Dolph suggests they double team and be co GMs. Because Paul Heyman was complaining about AJ putting her hands on him last week despite the edict given by the, the board of directors to AJ not to touch anybody after her melee. With one Vicky Guerrero. This whole situation of everyone talking brought out the general manager herself, AJ Lee, and also Team Hell No came out. And Daniel Bryan also came out to play with the whole AJ thing. Especially after AJ was talking about a coach who would see later on because AJ said she's on probation, blah, blah, blah. She's got a coach trying to help her out. And we thought that Ryan was the coach because he came out after AJ says, I got a coach, but it wasn't Daniel Bryan. That's when Ken came out as well. So I am the tag team champion. I am the tag team champion. Blah, blah, blah. So AJ made the main event, which is the smartest thing she did tonight since she lost her head completely tonight. We saw for the backstage segments. She, of course, made the main event, which would be Daniel Bryan and Kane, a.k.a. Team Hell No, taking on CM Punk and Dolph Ziggler. They teamed up a few weeks ago. Of course, we saw Punk walk out. We would see what happened later on in the main event. And speaking of Team Hell No, we continued on with the tag team tournament to determine their next number one contenders, which started this past Friday on SmackDown with Rhodes Scholars. Cody Rhodes and David Sandow, who you would see later on in the evening, where one wrestle pretty damn good against a champion. But indeed, we saw our next first round matchup. Rey Mysterio teaming up with Sin Cara. Against Emo, Primo, and Epico. With, of course, primetime players at ringside. You think I'm making mistakes? Count all the mistakes JR made tonight. JR flubbed a lot tonight. JR still a lot of rusty. And speaking of flubbing, before we get to the first match, AJ announced the match, but I forgot to mention it was tonight. Yeah, a couple of flubs tonight from people. Anyway. Oh, in our first match, I'm surprised that JR botched more than Sin Cara tonight. Usually Sin Cara is the one who's botching. But it was a decent matchup to begin the match tonight with Primo and Epico against Mysterio and Sin Cara. Like I said, part time players at ringside, they would face off against, well, they have to face Kofi and all truth on Friday. And the winner of their match would take on the winner of the Sin Cara Mysterio Primo Epico match, would end up being uh, Mysterio and Sin Cara. The team looks okay. You know, when a guy like Sin Cara budgets a lot, it's tough, it's tough to team up with a guy like that. But these two are making it work for what it for what it's worth. With Sin Cara and Mysterio getting the victory after uh, Mysterio delivered the 619, he tagged in Sin Cara, or actually he kind of pushed him off the top rope for a big splash, and Mysterio got this drop in the dime move on Primo, and a 1 2 3 victory for Mysterio and Sin Cara advancing to the second round, the semifinals. They're going to face either Kofi and Truth. Or the primetime players. Depends on who wins their match this Friday on SmackDown to continue this tournament. So there you go. Say call Mysterio win. Decent, okay matchup. Now, on with our next match. Kind of a quickie, and I do mean a quickie squash. 
It was Bordis Clay. Yes. Bordis Clay in a match against I forgot who it was. Oh wait. The United States champion without Oksana, of course. Antonio Sasawa. A quick match up. Really quick. About a minute. Uh Bordis dominated the early going. But then as Bordis was living his big splash move. Send uh Sasawa came in with a little uppercut from up in the air. And got his finishing move. Yes, his finishing move on a big man like Bordis Clay. Getting the victory in this really quick matchup. It was his uh, okay. Sasal's okay. His heel character's kinda getting better, but not that much. So they don't anything Sasal non title taking on Bordis Clay in a quick matchup and a quick victory for Mr. Sasawo. Without of course his little girly friend Oksana at ringside. Now, on with our next match. Before then, we had a little confrontation with uh, Caitlyn, who's back. And it's one of many backstage segments we saw when AJ is like, I call it Jacqueline Hyde. You know, AJ's like, I'm sorry for turning my back on you. And then she's like, hey, I'm not sorry. She's like, she's a complete 360. You know what I mean? She, she is a freak. You know, this whole AJ storyline's gone way out of control. Especially when we got to the main event. So, uh, there you go. But on to our next match with a brand new shirt. My man, woo, 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 you know it, Zack Ryder in a non title match taking on the other champion in WWE besides the WWE and World Champion, The Miz, the rainy IC champion, who of course needs a rebound after his Miz TV show's bombing. Anyway, uh, Zack Ryder took control. He was about to nail the, he nailed the Bolski boot. He took control, but wasn't a matchup. He was trying to end a rough rider. Miz blocked it, which gave him the advantage to get the score crushing finale and the victory on Zack Ryder. He was impressive in this match, but once again, Zack Ryder lost to the Miz. So there you go, Miz, IC champion. Now on to the stupidest segment of the evening. The World Championship debate with while active trittering people, making people tritter about the question. Being well acted. I know they're doing this debate because the first presidential debate is on Wednesday with Obama and Romney. I'm pissed because it's preempting by the family. Anyway, so we had Sheamus and Big Show. Stupid match, stupid debate. I said in my tech line earlier that Sheamus and Big Show is going to be the worst fucking match in the world. Big Show can't wrestle that much anymore. It's going to be a slow match. Unless it's ending in 45 seconds. I hope it ends in less than a minute. Because we don't want to see this match. Even if it is how to sell, I said on the attack letter name. Even if it is how to sell, match is still going to suck. And I hate to say this, but I agree with Big Show. This, in his opening segment, statement, he said all we were thinking. This segment, this whole debate is fucking stupid. The talking is over. Big was like, oh, this is all stupid. I'm going to win. Blah, blah, blah. Sheamus was joking a lot. He wasn't taking anything seriously, making fun of Big Show about how fat he is. But, you know, he been posing as a cousin, Wayne Mysterio Sullivan, on a couch, which was fucking stupid. This whole segment was stupid. I predicted that there was going to be an also an attack, like I said, I predicted that this debate would end in a brawl or altercation. Well, it was almost happening. Big Show took his shirt off, he was wearing a suit, Sheamus was in wrestling gear, he would wrestle later on. I mentioned he would wrestle. Damien Sandow, or Cody Rhodes, well, Cody would stay out of ringside with Damien, anyway. Looked like the fight I predicted was going to happen, but Big Show backed away. So we ended this stupid debate with a stupid ending. Of course, we would later see Sheamus wrestle later on in the evening. Now, as we shake the cupboards off a stupid segment, on with our next match, which is also kind of a Stupid situation. It was the one man bay. Heap Slater taking on Santino Morella. And Slater had a little bit of company at ringside. He had Jinder Mahal. And he also had another friend, Scottish friend, Drew McIntyre at ringside, the Jabba team. Team Jabba. That's the team name. Anyway. Uh, before that match, we actually had Tenzai against Ryback. Of course, the guy would get a little face up and pumped. 
Another good typical Ryback match, even with Tenzai. Uh, Tenzai's been getting beat by everybody. You know, someone slammed Tenzai. I think, who slammed Tenzai last week? Was it Ryback? But who knows. But uh, Tenzai lost, because the watch. Uh, uh, uh. Typical Ryback squash. Go, bug, indeed. Ryback wins the squash. Let's move on to the match I was talking about, which was Heath Slater taking on Santino Morella with Jenna Mahal, Drew McIntyre, ringside. Another silly squashing match, which ended in a disqualification. Uh, actually, it looked like Heath was going to win the match, but uh, Santino made the comeback. He did his famous two moves to do before he did. He was ready to pull out the Cobra, but Jinder Mahal and Drew McIntyre got, got involved, causing a disqualification. And I heard rumors that Santino was uh, injured. Injured or not, maybe that's why they attacked him after the match. They triple teamed on Santino, this entity I call Team Jabo because they jobbed a lot. You know. Anyway, uh, let's see what these what this tandem can do as they sent a huge message to not just Santino but everybody by attacking Santino after the match. Maybe whether or not why they did it, maybe because he's injured, who knows. I heard he did get injured, but they said it was a close call. Injured or not, maybe that's why they had the triple team attack on Santino. Maybe they're winding him out to let him rest if he is really injured. But indeed, it was a disqualification victory for Santino. But Santino was laid out by Heath Slater. And of course, the uh, triple tandem. Also, we had Eve, the Rainy Divas champion, taking on Beth Phoenix after what happened last week when... Uh, Eve accused Caitlyn's attacker of being Beth Phoenix and and of being wall, blah blah blah. Typical Divas match, silly Divas match with Eve getting the victory. Probably Eve got injured and Eve took the advantage, blah blah blah. Supposed to ship my ass, so uh, another typical Divas match with Eve getting the victory over Beth Phoenix, who's of course leaving at the end of the month, as I mentioned on the attack line, as well as of course Kelly Kelly being released over the weekend. Now. Now it was that match. I kind of uh, mixed up the order. That uh, that Eve's match was after Jinder Mahal. Eve's match was before the Santino match. But anyway, now I'm back in order with our next match, which I thought was a decent matchup. Uh, I was kind of impressed by uh, Damian Sandow and his performance against Sheamus. Now, non title match, of course, Sheamus fuming after his little debate with Big Show, of course. Although he's a little bit focused on Big Show, he didn't focus enough on Damien Sandow. Must have underestimated him. Sandow with, of course, his partner. World Scholar's partner. Cody was at ringside, commentating a little bit before Sandow tried to leave. But even if he did leave, he did come back. And Sandow was impressive in this match. He really took it to Sheamus. You know, I, I was kind of impressed by his performance tonight. Uh, his character, people want to hate him. You know, the whole preacher thing. You know what I mean? I'm kind of getting used to his character now. And, uh, I kind of like his like development. He's getting a little push, rising up, and I saw him taking the advantage of Sheamus, but I was like, I like Sandow in this match, and I know he's going to lose, which he, of course, did lose, but I thought he was a decent performer in this matchup. He uh, took it to Sheamus, physicality of the match. It was kind of back and forth, especially the last five minutes with Sheamus making the comeback, delivering the white noise, and even getting Cody Rhodes involved, which didn't involve a disqualification. That was weird, but uh, Cody Rhodes got the ball. Of a broke kick. That was a double broke kick. To both Cody and Sandow. Which ended the match. Once we three victory for Sheamus. Coming back after being dominated. Both of the match. By Damien Sandow. That was a decent matchup. Probably my favorite matchup. Of the night's wall. So there you go. Sheamus wins. Over Damien Sandow. Who like I said. Gave an impressive performance. Maybe we'll see him down the road. Maybe getting a title shot. Or maybe being champion. He needs a few more big wins. A little bit more development. But indeed Damien Sandow is on the way up. This is what JR like to call his signature match. The match that kind of made him jump start to being a star. The match that kind of uh, starts the rise from just another guy to being a superstar. But that's not for a while, JR. So his signature match would be like at a pay per view. But this is a decent matchup. Kind of a jump start for Sam Dowd if he gets another big win over somebody after coming back from this loss. Because being a JR. On oh, a segment, next segment, which was uh, Jerry Hall, Jim Ross, Appreciation Night. Of course, Jim Ross is, of course, replacing Jerry Lawler for the time being. I mean, Jerry may come back in November. That is target, but we'll see what happens. Uh, Jerry Hall, it was Jerry Hall Appreciation Night because it was in 
Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. But indeed, the celebration was tainted by an impromptu appearance by the reigning WWE, champ WWE champion, CM Punk. So, blah, 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 I should be one is appreciated. I don't get respect. Ba 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 ba. You don't look tough. Ba 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 ba. Blah blah blah. Making people boo now. You know, last couple weeks we've been hearing people still cheer him, but I think more people are booing him now. He's acting really heel now. Goes to heel tones. Now getting booed a lot. And uh, ba 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 ba. And uh, he's three sixteen now. Ba ba ba. Uh, Punk delivered a decent promo. He's back to hat, and here comes Wyback coming to the rescue. Because we saw, of course, Wyback confronting Punk last week after attacking Mick Foley. It looked like Punk was going to fight Wyback. But Punk left before a fight could happen. They're still, they're probably teasing the possible feud between Punk and Wyback. Who knows? You know, it'd be a weird thing to have Wyback against Punk. You know, it'd be kind of a weird thing. But uh, we'll see what happens with uh, this whole. Developing situation, especially since we still do not know who's going to face Punk at Hell in a Cell. Is it going to be Cena? Will it be well enough? Or will it indeed be right back? We just don't know. I said that there would be more questions than answers. And unfortunately, there is more questions than answers. But uh, speaking of questions and answers, on our next match, which calls question about a relationship between Ricardo Rodriguez and Alberto Del Rio. Of course, Alberto Del Rio took on Kofi Kingston. Now, I kind of been seeing this. I can kind of sense the tension between Ricardo and uh, Alberto for weeks since the nine champions. You know, who knows? Maybe Ricardo's gonna pick up off him, especially since Ricardo wrestling under the mask doing dunk matches. Anyway, because Ricardo's really a wrestler. Anyway, uh, okay matchup between Alberto and Kofi. Kofi tried the offense, but of course, like the others, Kofi would fall to the cross arm breaker in a victory from. Alberto Del Rio, of course, Alberto's out of the world title picture for now. He's trying to find his way back, claw, claw his way back to being considered for another world title shot. So there you go, Alberto wins. Now on to our next match. The main event, CM Punk teaming up with Dolph Ziggler against Team Hell No, Kane and Daniel Bryan, with a special guest referee. Now AJ was assigning it to the coach that she doesn't need, blah, blah, blah. But AJ became the special guest referee herself in this matchup. Uh, it's kind of a silly man event with AJ uh, throwing out Vicky and Paul Heyman midway towards the end of the matchup, which kind of uh, signified the ending. But uh, Kane and Daniel Bryan's problems are still continuing because they think of themselves more than the team. They were kind of tagging each other in and out kindly, but then blind tagged each other in, slapping each other in. While Punk and Ziggler, on the other hand, were working tremendously well in his attack team. Uh, they both dominated most of the match. Until uh, Daniel Bryan came in like a house of fire attacking everybody. And putting Punk in the no lock. And Punk's foot was on the rope being pushed by Paul Heyman. AJ wouldn't take any crap of anybody. That's when I mentioned that she threw out Paul Heyman. And also threw out Vicky Guerrero. And Dolph Ziggler did the same thing that... CM Punk did drum a couple weeks back. He walked out on CM Punk. Punk was left all alone as Kane Black dagged himself in once again to choke CM Punk and gain the victory. Yes, Kane pinned the WWE Champion in this matchup. And Kane Daniel Bryan ended Raw fighting once again over who's the tag team champion. Oh, the tag team champion. The other tag team champion. Blah, 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 blah. So, uh, there you go. Uh, I think it's another mix back for Raw. See what develops in the, in the tag team tournament next couple of weeks, and also with the upcoming new show on WWE television, the new show main event premiering this Wednesday on Ion at 8 o'clock with Sheamus and CM Punk, the match that was supposed to be on Raw, now it's going to be the first inaugural main event for the aforementioned name main event on Ion. So you have that goes. But it's probably going to be like another Superstars. You know, Superstars start the same way. Superstars had a great main event. Take with Matt Hardy, but then we saw all the jobbers on it. So uh, there you go. Especially Saturday morning slam now. Dirty is oversaturated somewhat. With too many shows again. So uh, there you go. Especially with a three hour wall after wall. Even with a three hour wall, they still can't use all their talent. Still weird. Uh, anyway, mix back for wall. Sam Down was great in his match against Sheamus. The bait sucked and uh, AJ's crazy. This whole storyline's got out of control. Needs a fucking end. Quickly. 
Ah, uh, that is it for the attack line. Not the attack line. By wall with you. Sorry. By wall with you. Seriously, JR. You're not the only one making botches tonight. I'm making botches. That is it for my wall review. See you all later. Then my minute to act by the review from Zach. Thank you all so much for watching. See you next time. See you later.